An aneurysm is an enlargement of an artery caused by weakness in the arterial wall. Now this weakening, this focal weakening uh, in the arterial wall will cause the formation of a bulge or a dilation. That's why we can call aneurysms as being abnormal vascular dilations. Now there are three types of aneurysms based on how they appear and what their wall consists of. The first one are true aneurysms, then we have false aneurysms, and then we have dissecting aneurysms. First of all, true aneurysms. In true aneurysms, the wall of the aneurysm is going to have all the three layers of a typical arterial wall, though these layers can be individually uh, damaged or attenuated. Examples of true aneurysms can be atherosclerotic aneurysm. Now, these are those aneurysms which are caused due to the weakening of the vessel wall media brought on by the inflammation caused by atherosclerosis because we know that atherosclerosis is a chronic inflammatory and repair process. So this inflammation of course will cause the eating up of the vessel wall media and uh, thus the wall will be weakened and prone to aneurysm formation. Secondly we have syphilitic aneurysm. This type of aneurysm chiefly occurs in tertiary syphilis. Now we know that syphilis is an infectious disease caused by the spirochete treponema pallidum now what this spirochete does is that um, it will go to the large arteries, particularly the aorta, and in the adventitia of the large arteries, say this is the adventitia, this is the media, and this is the intima, adventitia has the vasa visorum, right, which is the blood supply of the vessels. So this uh, spirochete chiefly attacks the vasa visorum of the adventitia and causes inflammation over there. So all this inflammatory process is going to cause the formation of obliterative end arteritis. Now, this simply means that the end arteries, which are the vasovisorum in this case, are going to be obliterated by all the inflammation that is being caused by the spirochete. Thirdly, we have congenital vascular aneurysms. These are those aneurysms which are due to the congenital weakness of the vessel wall. Lastly, we have left ventricular aneurysm. Now, this aneurysm does not occur in the arterial wall. It occurs in the myocardial wall. So, what will happen is that, uh, in this case, why it happens is when we have a transmural MI, that means the, all the three layers of the cardiac tissue are damaged or dead, that area will be prone, uh, that, will, that will lose its contractile strength, right? So, it will be prone to aneurysm formation. Next we have false or pseudo aneurysms. Now these aneurysms are not due to vessel wall weakening but they are due to some sort of trauma or mm, puncturing of the vessel wall. I'm saying vessel wall because these aneurysms are present both in uh, venous and arterial walls because these are simply hematomas. Okay, So what will happen is that um, since it is an extravascular hematoma what will happen is that if this is the puncture site a hematoma is going to be formed uh, here and this will stay in place it will be confined to this place by the extravascular tissue that is around this um, hematoma so it looks like an aneurysm but it is not an aneurysm it's simply a hematoma but it is in communication with the uh, interior of the vessel examples of false aneurysms will be tr those caused by trauma those by percutaneous surgical procedures and also those which are formed at a leak at the junction of a vascular graft and a natural artery. Lastly, we have dissecting aneurysms. Now these are due to a tear in the intima, okay, which will cause the blood to flow between the intima and media. Now how is this different from a false aneurysm? Now in the false aneurysms we saw that all the three layers of the vessel wall were damaged and there was an extravascular hematoma. But in this case, what will happen is that only the intima will be damaged. Let me draw it here. This is the intima, this is the media, and this is the adventitia. So what will happen is that, I'll show it by blue. If, if there is a tear in the intima due to any reason, high blood pressure or connective tissue disorders, what will happen is that the uh, blood will start pooling between the intima and the media. It is called dissecting aneurysm because it is similar to arterial dissection in which the blood continues to flow between the intima and the media. Okay? In this case, what will be different is that the blood won't be uh, continuing to uh, flow between the intima and media, but 
there will be pooling of blood over here and this will cause the formation of a dissecting aneurysm because these uh, because chiefly the blood will be present between the intima and medium okay example of a dissecting aneurysm is uh, ascending aortic aneurysm and this is the chief place where aortic dissection occurs as well so there are two types of true aneurysm secular and fusiform uh, secular is like a sac and fusiform is like a spindle these two diagrams show the false aneurysms and dissecting aneurysm. Now we'll see the complications of formed aneurysms. That means that once we have an aneurysm formed, what are the uh, dangerous consequences that is, it is going to have? The first complication of a formed aneurysm is naturally aneurysm rupture. So this rupture most commonly uh, occurs in the aneurysm that is formed in the abdominal aorta and since it is the chief large blood vessel it is going to leak all that blood that is present within it and uh, leading to instantaneous death and even with surgery the best case survival chances are 1 in 20 patients which is not very good. Secondly as we talked about in the dissecting aneurysms uh, these aneurysm can go on and become uh, full-blown dissections that means that here as we said this will not uh, just be pooling over here but it will uh, go on dissecting the blood vessel and the blood will start flowing between the intima and the media that is a full-blown dissection so this is another complication of uh, aneurysm formation and this most commonly occurs in the thoracic aorta now one thing to remember is that thoracic aorta is the ascending aorta that is the aorta that is directly uh, originating from the heart so if this is the aortic valve and this is the ascending aorta so we have the heart over here okay so what will happen is that if this is the aortic valve and blood is flowing like this and um, since we're talking about dissection here is going to be the intimal tear and if the blood starts flowing between between the intima and the media like this it can also go retrograde and enter the pericardial cavity and result in the compression of the heart which will uh, be called as cardiac tamponade also since all the blood is going backwards there will be decreased flow to vital organs next is aneurysm thrombosis now why does that occur is uh, for example if this is the aneurysm and normally we know that the blood flowing should be laminar to prevent any thrombosis and coagulation so uh, in this case the aneurysm has caused some turbulence over here at these points so this area will be subject to thrombosis or coagulation so this chiefly occurs in small vessel uh, small vessels aneurysms and if it is a slow process it can be treated but if it is a fast process then it can lead to severe uh, gangrene and um, we have to do amputation next complication is embolization the same uh, thrombus that is going to be formed here can embolize and uh, go into the toes and in the cut causing the formation of blue toes and also cut perforation the next complication is infection or inflammation of the stable clots. So once these clots are formed, uh, we know that clotting and inflammation are always uh, going on. If, if we have clotting, we have inflammation. If we have inflammation, we have clotting. So uh, this is another complication. And also there can be infection of the stable clots by bacteria. And thus we have to give uh, antibiotics and anti-inflammatory uh, medicines to cure this uh, complication. The last complication of aneurysms is going to be the pressure effects that it uh, generates. These are chiefly by the true aneurysms and large aneurysms. So uh, if we have this large aneurysm in the aorta, we're going to have cough, fullness, feeling, difficulty swallowing, etc. All, all these pressure effects. Coming to the pathogenesis of aneurysm formation, why do these aneurysms occur in the first place? There can be many reasons. First reason is poor vessel matrix quality. Now, first reason is that the vessel wall, the arterial wall is not built up uh, like it should be. The elastic tissue is not as it should be. So, there can be many connective tissue disorders such as Marfan syndrome, Lois Deitch syndrome and Ehlers Danlos syndrome which are going to result in poor vessel matrix quality and these vessels will be prone to aneurysm formation by high blood pressure. The second reason is an imbalance of matrix synthesis and degradation. Now, when does this uh, imbalance occur? This is chiefly in inflammatory processes. And the chief inflammatory process of the vessel wall is atherosclerosis, of course. So, in atherosclerosis, as we know, it is a chronic inflammatory and repair process. So, 
where, wherever there is inflammation there is going to be inflammatory cells and inflammatory cells have enzymes like matrix metalloproteinases which degrade the matrix so when there is an imbalance of matrix synthesis and degradation chiefly in atherosclerosis this can be another reason the last reason can be a loss of medial smooth muscle cells or change in smooth muscle cell synthesis now what do i mean by that since we know that uh, if this is the vessel and we have uh, say the media is here so we have two parts of the media right uh, on the basis of blood supply there are no two parts okay so uh, one part that is the one that is nearer to the lumen of the vessel is going to be supplied by the blood which is already flowing within the lumen but this outer part is going to be supplied by uh, vasa vasorum okay vasa vasorum in the adventitia so we can have two types of ischemia one can be inner media ischemia the other can be mid media ischemia the inner media ischemia can be uh, due to an atherosclerotic plaque say which will prevent the diffusion of nutrients into the inner media and uh, Uh, similarly we can have some problems with the vasa vasorum uh, atherosclerosis can be there in the vasa vasorum as well that will uh, prevent nutrient exchange into the mid media so when there is ischemia of the media what will happen is there will be a process known as cystic medial degeneration okay now what does cystic medial degeneration means it means that there will be a uh, smooth muscle cell loss right so in the place of smooth muscle cells we are going to have increased production of amorphous ground substance which is useless because uh, we do not need amorphous substance in the media and histologically there will be cyst formation now the various etiologies why aneurysms can occur is because of atherosclerosis as i mentioned this occurs chiefly in the abdominal aorta hypertension chiefly in thoracic aorta syphilis trauma vasculitis congenital defects for example berry aneurysms which are in the cerebral blood vessels next we can have septic microembolization of the vasa vasorum now in this case it is going to be caused by bacteria so we can have bacterial endocarditis which will cause this uh, septic microembolization to the vasa vasorum which will cause uh, obliterative endarteritis and thus the media will suffer ischemia and all that stuff this can occur due to infection of the arterial wall or also due to systemic bacteremia the fungi that are involved are aspergillus and mucor bacteria that are involved are uh, salmonella and pseudomonas chiefly now what can we do to investigate these aneurysms for screening purposes we can use ultrasound but for morphology and the detailed investigation we need a ct scan or mri regarding the treatment we can have open surgical repair and remember this should be in a preventive way because once the aneurysm starts doing all those complications and the chief complication is the rupture remember so in that case surgery is uh, not very beneficial so the indications for surgery are symptomatic patients regardless of size of the aneurysm if the patient has symptoms uh, due to any of the complications regardless of the size uh, size of the aneurysm we have to do surgery and secondly asymptomatic patient with a size of greater than 5.5 cm in diameter if the aneurysm is greater than 5.5 cm in diameter and the patient is asymptomatic we should um, do surgery okay lastly we have two aneurysms to know about one is the abdominal aortic aneurysm and the other is the thoracic aortic aneurysm so both are in the aorta right one is in the abdominal aorta and the other is in the thoracic or ascending aorta so the chief etiology of abdominal aortic aneurysm is atherosclerosis and in this case we are going to have hypertension as the chief etiology mostly in older adults that is more than 50 years of age while in younger adults we are going to have uh, marfan syndrome and lois dietz syndrome which are uh, connective tissue disorders which will be causing these aneurysms so most common site of uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm is below the renal arteries above the aortic bif bifurcation remember this point this is very 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 important okay the classic group that is affected are chiefly men over the age of 50 and are smokers now if abdominal aortic aneurysms are asymptomatic they are of course going to be found incidentally okay if they are symptomatic but without rupture we are going to have back and abdominal discomfort and epigastric swelling and expansile pulsation because these are true aneurysms which will be pulsating with the contraction of the heart and thirdly if they are symptomatic with rupture what will happen is that we are going to have sudden onset of flank pain and hypotension and also there is going to be a pulsatile abdominal mask and one thing more to remember is that since this is caused by atherosclerosis these atherosclerosis uh, can also be accompanied in the coronary arteries and thus we can also have increased risk of ischemic heart disease in such patients 
So atherosclerosis was one reason why abdominal aortic aneurysms occurred, right? But a second reason, which is mostly in younger patients, is inflammation and it is only in 5-10% to of the cases. It is characterized by a transmural lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate. That simply means that the abdominal aorta, the wall of the abdominal aorta is going to have a lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate. One type of this disease is IgG4 related disease. In this case, what will happen is that there will be plasma cells which will be expressing IgG4 uh, antibodies and that will be infiltrating the wall of the aorta. Coming to the thoracic aortic aneurysm, the chief causes were hypertension, connective tissue disorders and also another one to remember is syphilis. The pathophysiology I already explained that the vasovasorum of the adventitia will undergo obliterative endarteritis and this will be due to syphilitic invasion of course. One important point to remember over here is in the tertiary syphilis we have tree bark appearance of the intima of the thoracic aorta. So why does that occur is that there is constantly um, inflammation and repair processes going on which lead to this tree bark appearance. Now one thing to remember is that this is protective against dissection. Since there is fibrosis this uh, area is protected against dissection because the wall has strength. Although this is protective against aortic dissection it can always lead to aortic regurgitation because of the aortic valve uh, incompetency and separation of the leaflets. The definitive diagnosis is by aortography also, the chief symptoms of thoracic aortic aneurysms are due to compression. That is because since it is in the thorax, we have other important structures such as esophagus and trachea in the thorax as well. Uh, that's all.